Okay, so this video is going to go through um, that question four that a lot of people had a uh, problem with. I'm just going to write down some information from the question first of all. So that was uh, lambda equals um, 490 nanometers. Um, uh, power uh, was equal to 7.5 times 10 to the minus 2 watts. Um, next bit is that we have a work function um, of 2 electron volts. We might have to convert that to joules later on. Um, part A says the number of photons emitted per second. So the first thing to realize um, is that the number of photons per second is n divided by t, number divided by time. So we know the equation E equals nHf. A few people didn't really like this equation. Uh, it is just E equals hf, but it's total energy. So you've got the number of photons, uh, and that gives you the total energy. Therefore, power, power is energy divided by time. So energy divided by time is the same as n over t. HF, uh, and so by taking this bit and this bit, we can rearrange the equation now to get an expression for N over T, uh, which is equal to P over HF. Plug the numbers in, there's your power, uh, there's your H, uh, your frequency you don't know, so you're going to need to work out the frequency, frequency, F equals C over lambda, you've got your wavelength there, so you plug that value right into here. And when you do all that, it's going to give you the correct answer, uh, which I um, don't have. Uh, but I have right here next to me, um, it was a 1.66 times 10 to the minus 19. Uh, is that right? No, that's not right at all. It was uh, 1.85 times 10 to the 17. 1.85 times 10 to the 17 uh, photons per second. Photons per second, which is what the question originally asked for. On to part B then. Part B said that if 10% uh, of the photons result in an electron being emitted, what current is produced? Well, we know that the number of electrons per second equals uh, 1.85 times 10 to the 17 um, electrons per, uh, photons per second. The number of electrons is 10% uh, of that, so 10% of this number is divided by 10. So 1.85 times 10 to the 17, or 10 to the 16 electrons per second. Um, now the uh, charge on one electron, the charge on one electron is 1.6. It's actually technically a minus, but we'll ignore that. 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. That's the charge on one electron. So if you have this many electrons and you want to know the total charge, uh, you're going to multiply these through. So 1.85 times 10 to the 16 um, multiplied by 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 uh, is going to give you the charge per second. Uh, that comes out to be um, 3 uh, milli uh, amps. The, the actual number you're going to get is going to be 0 0.003 and that's coulombs per second. And of course, a coulomb per second is equivalent to an amp. And then it's 0 0.003, which is where the milli comes from in part B. Uh, question C then. Question C asks us to um, calculate the energy of each photon in, in electron volts. Um, so we first of all need to work out the energy of a photon in joules. That comes from Hc over lambda. Lambda we had given in the question as 490 times 10 to the minus 9. The rest of this is constants, so uh, 6.63 6 times 10 to the minus 34, multiplied by the speed of light, 3 times 10 to the 8, divided by the wavelength at 490 times 10 to the minus 9. Let's stick those numbers into the calculator and see what we get. 6.63 minus 34 multiplied by 3 to the power of 8, um, divided by 490 to the power times 10 to the minus 9, and that's going to give us an energy of 4.06 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. Now, the reason we use electron volts is because this energy is so small. Uh, it makes much more sense if we uh, actually use electron volts to express it. Um, remember that one electron volt equals... Uh, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. So how can we convert? Well, we divide this number through by the charge on an electron. So 4.06 times 10 to the minus 19 divided by 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. And you can see immediately that's going to give us a, a much more uh, easy to use answer of uh, 2.5 
four electron volts, and that's how we do part C. Okay, part D asks us to do some work uh, using the photoelectric effect equation. It asks for the maximum kinetic energy of the photoelectrons in electron volts. So let's kick that off. The equation we're going to use is HF equals phi plus half mv squared. Now, we're not going to use HF. Um, we use HC over lambda because we're given lambda in this question. We calculated that in the last part. We know it's 4.06 times 10 to the minus 19. Phi was given in the question. Uh, it was given as two electron volts. So as we're working in electron volts here, we're, we're kind of all good. In fact, we got uh, this was 2.54 electron volts um, at the end. So we've got 2.54 electron volts equals two electron volts. So therefore, the half mv squared must be 0 0.54 uh, electron volts. Um, and so that's how we're going to get that part of the question. Part II is going to ask us to then uh, ask what speed these electrons would have. Uh, it says ignore rel relativistic effects. We, we don't know anything about that. You'll touch on it in year 13, uh, but still never fully um, calculate it at year 13. So what we're going to do here is we're going to say that the energy is 0 0.54 electron volts. First of all, we convert to joules. So we do 0 0.54 multiplied by 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19, which is the charge on the electron. Um, so stick that in the old calculator. 1.6 to the minus 19. That gives me 8.64 times 10 to the minus 20. Okay, so that's the kinetic energy that it has, which is half mv squared. Uh, and this value is equal to this value. Um, we need to get v. So v equals uh, 2ke over m square rooted. So we're going to have uh, the square root of 2 by 8.64 times 10 to the minus 20. Divide by the mass of the electron, which is 9.1 times 10 to the minus 31 kilos. All of that is square rooted. Uh, so 2 times my answer. Um, divide by 9.1 times 10 to the minus 31. Square rooted. And I get an answer of 435, 763.8 uh, uh, meter per second. And that's my final answer for my velocity. Um, so that's, uh, that's the value. Uh, I noticed it's less than the speed of light, which is a good thing. If I calculated a value that was more than 3 times 10 to the 8 here, I'd know I had made a mistake. Okay, so part E is uh, a question that asks us what the effect is of uh, doubling the incident power. So doubling the incident power effectively means sending in twice as many photons per second. Uh, it's making it brighter or making it more intense. So how would that affect the maximum energy of the electrons? Well, this is the intensity. So you've got to think to yourself, for uh, part I, does the intensity affect the, uh, the energy of electrons? Does it? If you shine more photons, do you increase the energy of each electron? No, you do not. So there will be no change um, if we shine in a uh, greater intensity. Remember that one photon hits one electron. Therefore, having more photons doesn't give you uh, higher energy. Of course, if light was a wave, it would, but this is evidence for light being a particle. Uh, on to the second part now. Um, I'm just checking my camera is in focus there. Hopefully it was. If it wasn't, you, you can see now I hadn't written much. Um, for part two, the number of electrons emitted per second. So this is the intensity. Does it increase the number of electrons uh, per second? Number of electrons per second, which it, I guess is the current um, number of electrons per second. Yes, it does. If you have more photons, then you'll have uh, more um, electrons being liberated. So the intensity going up will increase the number of electrons per second. Okay, so on to part F. Uh, we're going to use this equation again, HF equals phi plus half mv squared. Um, however, let's just shift that down slightly. Um, there's no kinetic energy because part F is all about the threshold frequency. Well, it actually asks about the threshold wavelength, but the two are kind of similar. So we get this equation here with threshold frequency. Convert to wavelength, threshold wavelength. Rearrange the equation for HC over phi. And then convert our phi into um, joules. It's a, currently two electron volts. We need it in joules. So we're going to do 6.63 uh, times 10 to the minus 34. Uh, multiplied by 3 times 10 to the 8. Then divided by 2 times 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. And that's going to give us uh, our answer for our wavelength of 6.2, I'll leave it there, times 10 to the minus 7. Um, 
seven, that's always seven I overdrew, uh, meters. So we think to ourselves, is that sensible? It's 620 uh, nanometers. Is that a sensible wavelength? Yes, absolutely it is. So we know we've uh, probably got around the right answer. Now I am just looking across at the mark scheme, which has that as 155 nanometers, uh, despite the fact they've put in the same numbers as me here. And so uh, this is clearly a mistake in the mark scheme. So if you are looking at the mark scheme, be aware of that. Finally, on to part G, um, we're asked if uh, light of 1.5 times 10 to the 15 hertz will emit electrons. Will that emit electrons? Well, we need to work out the threshold um, frequency. So again, we do HF equals phi, uh, F equals phi over H. Um, this was 2 times 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. Uh, this was 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34. Check me out showing my work in like every stage. Like it's almost like doing that reliably gets you the correct answer. So 2, .1, 2 times 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 divided by 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 gives me a value of uh, 4.83 times 10 to the 14 hertz. So... Uh, the, uh, again, I guess they've calculated the threshold frequency wrong. Yeah, they totally have. So, man, who makes these, these sheets and doesn't check them before they send them out? Like, it's, it's crazy, isn't it? Um, I'm glad we didn't pay for it. Stole it off the internet. So, check it out. This value is bigger than this value. So, if we kind of compare these two values, this one is definitely bigger than this one. So, the frequency of light is bigger than the threshold frequency. Therefore, electrons will be emitted, uh, which, again, is different from the mark scheme, but Mr. Perry, the mark scheme, is is best mark scheme. So uh, I think we can all agree uh, on that. So anyway, hopefully you understand that question. I will put the question um, back at the start of the video for you to take a look at. Um, and uh, make sure you can go through this and calculate it. This really should be possible for everybody in the class to complete. Um, yeah, it's tricky, but we need to be able to embrace tricky questions like this and, and go through them and, and get the right answers. All right, have a good weekend, everyone. Peace.